Hello everyone. Our topic for today is single phase half wave control textile. Um, I uploaded this one here actually. Uh, I, I, uh, this is the this is the handout for you guys. This is the notes, and it's uh, uploaded in the blackboard. And also, I explained this in the blackboard for you guys, but I will do it also here with a video for you guys. Okay, so this is half wave, single phase half wave control. We have done this um, in the beginning of the term, beginning of the semester, but as on control. So let's see what will be the difference before the alpha used to be zero on control. But now we can play with alpha, which is the firing angle. We can make 30 degrees, 45, 60, 90 degrees, we will see that. And before we use a power diode, now we use a diester. Diester with a gate that we can control, that's the uh, only difference. And we call this diester or we call it SCR. We call it diester or we call it SCR, which is silicon control rectifier. And it's uh, one of the families of biases. Okay, let's see here. We have a positive current that goes through here. It will pass through because this one here is one uh, wave half. It will pass through only when we give a signal from the gate at a certain time, which is in a certain angle. Okay, and then it will pass. This is the V out that is here. This is the V out. Do you see that we will draw right there? And this is the positive and this is the negative right here. And then the current will go there. Negative cannot pass through because this is only, uh, this is one, one way back. The diode is still the same as the power diode. is one way back. Okay, so now, Let's see here, just for the resistive load now. So we're gonna draw this for the resistive load. So this one here is four resistive load. Four resistive load on, okay? So we are assuming that we only have resistive load. And after that, we will see what will happen with the inductor. Okay, so this is V out. You see? Actually, in halfway, we used to have this. Okay, and then this is zero up to here. And then we have this. That's in halfway. I mean, in halfway, uncontrolled. But this is halfway controlled. So let's choose a firing angle and on control the angle that alpha used to be zero. Now let's choose, for example, 60, 45, 30. We know that this is 90 degrees. And we know that this is 180 degrees. And we know that this is 270 degrees. And this is 360 degrees. And this is 30 here. And this is 60 degrees. And this is 110. And this is, sorry, this is 120, and this is 150 here, and, and so on. So let's look at, let's choose 45, guys. Let's say that alpha here equals 45 degrees, so 45 is here. This is 45. So means before it will nothing, it will be zero. So this is zero here. Okay. So this is my V out. Okay. And same thing here, it will be here. This is same as uh, 45. So now here, and this is my output now. Okay. That's V out. I out DC. Same thing here. 
you. Nothing, no current, because no alpha yet. The firing angle starts through the gate right here, then I will have both the current, otherwise nothing. Okay, so here. Okay, so now it's the same here. This is my, as before, yes, this is the current, so this is nothing here. Okay, if we uh, look at the V, uh, the voltage across the thyristor, which is V thyristor, or VSCR, and we're gonna draw right here, V thyristor, okay? And as we explained before, if there is current, if there is current through the thyristor, through the power diode, the voltage across the thyristor is zero, because the potential difference is Zero, as we explained before. So we look for the current. The current from here up to here is zero. So, I mean, there is current. So the potential voltage is zero. So the voltage across the thyristor is like a short circuit. And the same thing here up to this point here. So that's okay. And this voltage will appear the same. What's left? Let's see what's left. Up to here. Okay. That's V thyristor. If you add the V thyristor right here with the V out, if you put them together, you will get the V source. This is one of the ways just to, to know if you're okay or not. This is for the for the resistor to go on. If we come here, okay, and do the same for the inductive load now, and let's see here. So now I have this. Now I have this. Okay, now I have inductive load. Give me the pages, guys, for the textbook and also for the notes. Please look at page 94 to 99 in your textbook and pages 40 to 48 in your notes. Okay? Okay, so for those are the pages. Okay? I'm going to start with this. And I want you to read those uh, the pages. Now this one here, just to let you know, as before, this point is alpha, and this point here is beta, and from here to here is gamma. Okay, and we know from before that to find conduction angle beta minus. So in this case, conduction angle is 180 minus 45 equals 135 degrees. Okay. This is here V max. And this point here is I max. Okay, and this point here, this is a very important point that you need to know, V max. Sine alpha. Okay, so this one here is V max sine alpha. Um,
say now that we have um, the space we have for inductive, or let's say for RL load. So now we add inductive. So let's see what will happen. First, let's draw the V out. This is V out, VC. So it will be the same, it will go the same, guys. Of course, this is zero here, from here up to here. And this is. So now, let's use the same alpha 45. Okay, alpha is still the same, 45 degrees, guys. So this is 30 here, guys. And this is 60, and this is 90. So it will be right here. Okay. So here, this is gone. Okay. And same thing here, guys. Now we have inductive, guys. If we have inductive here, as we explained in the uncontrolled, if I have, let's say I have resistive and inductive here, which is for that case. What will happen? When the, bolt, when the current passes through the inductive load, what will happen right here? There will be magnetic field stored, or there will be current stored in the terms of magnetic field. And then during the negative, nothing is happening. Nothing. So what will happen? The polarity will be flipped. The polarity will be flipped, guys. And the inductive will release. The inductive will release the current. And the current will go through the main tensor. Well, uh, yeah, because I mean uh, we can have uh, we really we'll, we'll talk about the field in a bit. Anyway, so it will release same as what we explained in the down control. It will release through the thyristor till um, till the, uh, the magnetic field is released. Then it will stop. So that's what we will see here. I mean, just we draw this just to know. As a reference, then it will release, release, release. We don't know where it will stop. Let's assume that it will stop right here. Okay? And then the rest is here. And then the rest is here. Same thing right here. It will, it will release like this. Okay? Something like this. This uh, negative level is because of the inductive load as we explained before the current will passes through the inductive load and the inductive load will keep charging 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 because of the current that's during this time okay then during this time right here there is no current passing from the from the V source or from the I source this is I source here we call it we call this one I source Call this I diastole here, and we call this I out, and that's what we call it here. I source same as I, I diastole, same as I out, and the V source same as both. I mean, which is Kirchhoff's voltage law. We have this volt plus this volt, same as V source. Okay, so the current will pass through the inductive load. The inductive load will uh, keep charging. And then during the negative, this will be an open circuit, nothing will pass through. But now the inductive will work as a source, so it will release, it will release uh, as, as current. So the current will pass again from this side. If it comes from this side, from anode to cathode, it will pass through. So it will pass through till this one is released. And we assume that it will be, it will stop right here, so the current. Stop right here. Okay. And 
the same thing here. Yeah. Anyway, this is. Let's look at V type still right here, guys. Yeah, this is also I out. Okay, same points. Now there's uh, the beta will change. Now the beta is right here, guys. And it's alpha is still the same. And conduction angle, guys, from here up to here. It's bigger now. Now let's say that beta equals this is 180 right here, and this is 210, and this is 240. So beta equals 240 now. So if we do the calculation right here, you can say that conduction angle equals beta minus alpha, and beta is 240 minus 45 equals 1. 95. Conduction angle here, conduction angle here should be greater than 180. It cannot be less than 180. Put this in mind. Okay. Uh, let's look at V thyristor right here. The voltage across the thyristor, same as this right here. As we said before, when we have current, we look at the current, there is no voltage across the tire so because it's like a short circuit. So from here up to here, that's zero. From here up to here, that's two. Okay. And let's see the rest. The rest, I'm going to follow the source. I'm going to follow the source here, that's my source. Here, that's my source, and same thing here. Okay, so this one is gone, so I will see this, and that's what I will see here. And then I will follow the source, so I will see this. This is gone here. Okay. Uh, you can look at this in page uh, 97 here, okay? Okay, that's for the that to load. RMS also, V out RMS equals V max over 2, square root of 1 minus alpha over pi plus sine 2 alpha over 2 pi. out DC equals V 
minus over 2 pi cosine alpha cosine alpha minus cosine Okay, let's look at example uh, 311. Example 311, guys. Not 311, uh, sorry. Example uh, 310. So, example 310. Example 310. Uh, we have um, designed the circuit to, uh, to produce an average voltage of 40 volt. So we have V out DC average voltage equals 40 volt and we have uh, 100 ohms so resistance equals 100 ohms um, and we have the V source equals 120 volt RMS and the frequency 60 hertz. 60 okay. So let's determine the power absorbed by the resistance and the power back. So they're looking for the question is determine uh, the power absorbed. Okay? So determine the power absorbed. Okay? So when they say the power absorbed, as I told you before, means the P out RMS. So we're looking for the P out RMS. Okay? So let's see here. That's what they're looking for. And uh, use the red. It will work. So, first, they gave us the V out DC. So, we can, from here, we can, we can find. Okay, first, they're looking for the out RMS. So, that's the equation they're looking for. Vmax, yes, we have Vmax. Do we have alpha? No, we don't have alpha. We have everything except alpha. Okay, so that's here, that's what they're looking for. But this is the equation here. But alpha is missing. But we can't find alpha from here, guys. We can't find alpha from here. If this is given, which is the, the 40. Okay, so here we can say that 40 here equals Vmax, also we can find Vmax if this is given, that the uh, source is given okay, so Vmax is 120 times square root of 2 so Vmax equals 120 times square root of 2 that's the Vmax okay, so here I will have 40 and this one here is 120 square root of 2 2 by 1 plus cosine alpha. I can bring everything right here, and then it will be uh, alpha equals 
its cosine inverse of the value and alpha will be um, degrees, which is equals the radians, uh, 1.07 radians, okay? So now we found alpha. So we have alpha we can substitute here. We have B max, we can substitute here. And we have everything, so we can find the RMS. So the out RMS, by using this equation here, so V out RMS equals 75.675.6. So I have a power here equals 75.6 squared divided by the resistance, which is 100, and that's uh, equals 57. Point one watts, and then the power factor, guys. We know the power factor, which is the real power, which is P over the apparent power over S, and the real power is uh, fifty-seven, which is this point one divided by the apparent power, which is V source RMS times I RMS. Can look at it, page 96, and that's the value right here. Okay, and that's 0.63. Okay, guys, this is single phase half wave controlled rectifier. It's almost the same as uncontrolled except that we have, uh, we can play with, uh, with the firing angle, which is alpha. Okay, this is for the resistive load, and this is for the inductive load right here. Inductive load, RL, so just to, this is RL guys here, this is for RL. This case here, is for RL load. right here guys if we have a freewheeling the freewheeling will be right here Let me use another color guys the freewheeling will, will put it right here guys and we're gonna use a normal diode normal power diode this is the freewheeling so now what will happen the positive will go through the thyristor and the inductor now will be charging. And then when it's discharging, it will not release through the resource and through, through the uh, thyristor. It will release through the freewheeling diode. And when, when the current goes to the freewheeling diode, which is a short circuit, it will go back again to the inductor, so it will charge. So it will keep charging, discharging, charging, discharging. So the current will uh, will be continuous. The current will be continuous, same as what we have before. I can draw it right here. I can erase this, and I can I can leave. I can put this here. This information, which is conduction angle beta minus alpha uh, equals. 240 minus 45 equals 195 degrees, which is bigger than 180, greater than 180 degrees. Let's see here for the freewheeling diode, guys. For the freewheeling diode. Okay. And that's the freewheeling diode. Freewheeling diode. Free wheeling diode. First, we know that we have a freewheeling diode, we get rid of the negative weapon, so this will be gone, okay? 
So it will be, the voltage will be same as the V out DC with resistive load, and even the equations will be the same. So here I will have this, okay? And this one will be zero up to here. And this here. And again, it's the same, 45, so this is 45. So the negative ripple is gone. And you know, when we, uh, when we have the free wheeling diode, uh, we get rid of the negative ripple. We improve the voltage and current, which is the power, and that's the main thing. And also, we protect the main uh, thyristor because the current will not go back to the main thyristor, it will go back to the free wheeling diode. Okay? And also, the current will be, will be continuous to 2 pi, and we will see that right here. So the current, the current will be from here increasing and then it will start decreasing now. This current right here, up to this point, is through the through the thyristor. After that, because we will have a loop and the current will keep will, when it goes back to the to the inductor, it will charge again and again and again. It will last longer. And this current is through the prevailing diode. So it will be continuous up to here. And then it will pick up again and so on. Can you guys see that? Okay, so that's the prevailing diode. This is two pi here. Actually, sorry, here I think this is too high. This is too high. This is too high. Okay, so it will not be here, it will be zero. Okay. Up to this point. And then zero here. Unless the alpha is zero, then it will be continuous the whole time. But since since we have a gap, no, it will be zero at this time. It will be zero. And then it will be. So this current up to here, this part is I out DC. Or I can say that this is I to the thyristor. And this here, I to the freewheeling diode. And this is the V out. Freewheeling diode, we have four things. One, get rid. Okay. Of negative. Ripple. Two, improves voltage current, which is the power. And three, um, um, Protect the main diode, protect thyristor in our case. Okay. Or SCR, silicon rectifier, SCR, silicon control rectifier, which is a thyristor, for current is continuous. There's continuous. Thank you, and see you next time.